Okay, so we are back here now with the display of the questions which are going we are going to discuss today. Uh, so as it used to happen in the offline classes, similarly I am having here a display of questions for today, and I am going to discuss the answers also after the display of the corresponding questions. Uh, if you have any doubts or queries, please note it down. And you can get back to me after this display session is over. So you can just uh, write your comments in the comment section, and I will reply. Okay, so let's start for today. So the first question here, I hope it's visible to you. Okay, so the first question here is the average age of Nitika and Pretty is twenty-one years. The ratio of their ages is four to three, respectively. What is the present age of Preeti? Now, um, so this is a very typical, and I guess it's an easy question also on problems on ages, which we have covered when we were doing our offline classes before the mid-sem. So, uh, and, uh, how we will do it? I hope uh, everybody can do it really. But anyway, let's explain for a minute. So the ratio of the ages is four is to three. So therefore, uh, let us suppose that the ages of Nitika and Preeti are four x and three x years. Okay. So I display here basically the solution also. Uh, by the time I do explain, and so now according to the question, you see that the average age is twenty one years. That means four x plus three x is the total age. Divided by two is going to twenty one. So now we have an equation for that, and it's a very easy equation. You solve, you get x equal to six. So Preeti's age we had taken as three x. So therefore, Preeti's age is actually eighteen years. So therefore, our option A e is correct. So I think it's clear to all. It's a very easy question. So next question we come. To question number two, uh, in a class of 150 students, there are 80 boys and 70 girls. The average marks obtained by the class is 78. If the average marks obtained by boys and girls are in the ratio three to four, find the average marks obtained by the girls. So this is a question concerning average as well as some uh, ratio also. So let us see how we can solve it. Uh, I hope you also are trying at home with your pen and paper, and you can just tally your answer with mine. Um, so, uh, what is the thing now? So, average marks obtained by boys and girls are in the ratio three to four. So, let us say that the average marks obtained by the boys is say three p, and girls is four p. So, therefore. Uh, what sort of equation will we will now frame? You see that the average marks obtained by the class is seventy eight. That is the data given to us. So therefore, we can frame an equation now that you see there are eighty boys and the marks obtained are three p. So eighty into three p plus seventy into four p for the girls data and divided by the total number of students eighty plus seventy. So that is the average marks of the class, of course. And that is given to be seventy-eight. So now again, it's a very easy equation which you can solve. And you see, if you solve, p is coming to be twenty-two point five. So therefore, the age uh, of the average age of the girls is four p, which comes as ninety. That means which option was correct? Once again, the option A was correct. Uh, so. I hope that all of you are enjoying the problems and doing all along with me, and maybe you might be getting answers more quickly than me. Okay, so now the next question, third question for today. Ram sold an article at a profit of ten percent. If he had bought the article at ten percent less price and sold it for rupees ten less than the previous selling price, then he would have got a profit of twenty percent. What is the cost price of the article? So, uh, before we get into the problem, this is of course we can see this is a problem on profit and loss. 
which was not really uh, included in the syllabus of the second semester but you have done it in the first semester so that's why i have included it that because we need a practice for all types of problems okay so let us see the solution um how to do it so please see uh, now that uh, we have to find the cost price of the article so let us suppose that the cost price of the article uh, let us suppose let us take it as rupees 100a i'm just purposefully taking it as 100 because if you are in hundreds the things becomes uh, more easier because you have to work with percentages and now ram sold an article at a profit of 10 percent so uh, the selling price is of course if the cost price was 100 profit is 10 percent the selling price is of course 110 a and now it is telling that the price actually got reduced and he bought the article at 10 percent less price so that means the reduced cost price is uh, 10 percent less so 90 90 a and he sold it for rupees 10 less than the previous selling price so that means uh, the new selling price is uh, so this was previous selling price was 110 a so 110 a minus 10 and now the profit is 20 percent so of course then we have an equation like this that the new selling price minus the reduced cost price uh, divided by the cost price with multiplied with 100 equal to 20 this is our equation i hope you all agree and now again you have to solve take a few seconds to solve and if you solve it gives a as 5 so that means the cost price of the article is 500 so our option c is correct in this case okay uh so now we reach to the fourth question and this is a question on compound interest we have done several problems in the class before the mid semester when we were having our classes on this topic and so what is the question now uh what is the total interest obtained on a sum of rupees 500 at a rate of 10 percent for two years when the interest is compounded semi-annually so it's a problem where problem of compound interest and it is compounded semi-annually we have a formula for that you can directly apply the formula so here also basically that's what has been done um, so what was the formula do you remember it was the amount was p multiplied by 1 plus r by 2 divided by 100 to the power 2n right uh, that's what here what's coming in the display i'm not reading it all so if you put all the things so your r is 10 percent so r by 2 becomes 5 you have 2 years so 2n becomes 4 so basically that's the equation over here and if you solve you get it as 6077 so the interest obtained is 1077 that means our option g is the correct option here uh, now one minute I just interrupt here before going to the next question as I have already told you that after this session you have to enter your Google classroom and you have to look into the assignment problems and submit so now uh, in the assignment problems uh, I repeat that you should not just tell the option you must give an explanation or your argument just like here maybe in a few lines two three lines just like here as we are explaining the things here very similarly you should write few lines give your explanation and then the option not just the option that answer will not be accepted and uh, so you can uh, write it uh, by hand you can type whatever you want and then you should upload through the global classroom again okay so let us come to the next question question number five in how many ways seven consonants and three vowels can be arranged so that all the vowels remain all together okay this is a very easy and a common type of question 
I think something like this we had done when we were doing probability also. Uh, anyway, this doesn't include probability, but just you have to find the number of ways or so permutation problem. Uh, so here, uh, seven consonants and three vowels, they can be arranged so that the, all the vowels remain all together. So vowels remain all together, that means they are considered as a single entity. So that means in total we have eight entities. So eight entities can be arranged in factorial eight ways. And now the three vowels, they again can be arranged within themselves. So therefore, that can be done in factorial three ways. So therefore, your answer for this question is, uh, I think instead of going down, we can just see and here tell the option. Yes, it's factorial eight multiplied with factorial three, option A. So our next question, let us see what is there in the display. Question number six, a uh, four woman and six man can finish a task in two six by seven days and five women and three men can finish the same work in four days. In how many days 10 women and 12 men working together will finish the same task? Now this kind of problems we have done in a large number during the semester. So let us give a try. So maybe we can start like this. That suppose that the number of days taken by a man to complete the task is in and a woman takes W number of days and of course we take the total work as one unit and we see that four women and six men can finish the task in two six by seven days. So how much it comes? It's 20 by seven days, right? So I think we can now then frame an equation from this first condition that 4 by W plus 6 by M equal to 7 by 20 because it was 20 by 7 days and the second one 5 women so it's 5 by W and 3 men so 3 by M and it is 4 days so it now comes to be 1 by 4 now you have to take a minute to solve these two equations to get the W and M and uh, definitely everyone can solve and once you solve, we will get W as 40 and M as 24. So that means men takes 24 days and women takes 40 days if they work individually. So now the total work done by 10 women and 12 men in one day, that is 10 by 40 plus 12 by 24. So it comes to be 3 fourth. And therefore, the total work will be completed in 1 by 3 fourth, that means 4 by 3 days. So basically now, if we go back to the options, I think uh, 4 by 3 nowhere appears, so you have to choose the right answer as D, none. Uh, next question, a man bought some apples of which 13% of them were rotten. Uh, he sold 75% of the balance and was left with 261 apples. How many apples did he have originally? Okay, uh, this is an easier way. So, suppose that the number of apples be n. 13% uh, are rotten. So, that means 0.13n has been rotten, right? And 25% of the rest is 261. So therefore, how do you get an equation? So 261 is 25% of the rest. So that means 1 minus 0.3 multiplied with 0.25n. You solve, you get n equal to 1200. So number of apples were 1200. Next question. So I think this is again on a profit and loss. Ajay makes a profit of rupees 110 if he sells a certain number of pencils he has at the price of rupees 2.5 per pencil and incurs a loss of rupees 55 if he sells the same number of pencils for rupees 1.75 per pencil. How many pencils does Ajay have? So let us suppose that Ajay have say anything you can take, say let us say it's 
p number of pencils and suppose that the cost price of this p pencils is cp as usual we write cost price as cp and now so what the problem tells us that if he sells these pencils at the price of rupees 2.5 per pencil then he makes a profit of rupees 110 so we get a very simple equation what's the equation it's 2.5 p that is the selling price and the cost price is cp so minus cp is 110 at the same time we will get a second equation from the loss so he sells the same number of pencils for rupees 1.75 so that means he now sells at 1.75 p and the cost price is again cp so now 1.75 p minus cp it was a loss so minus 55 So two equations in two unknowns p and cp once again you can solve if you solve we get p we can get the both basically but we just need p so we will get p as 220 so option c is the right answer in this case next out of 10 persons working on a project Uh, four are graduates if three are selected what is the probability that there is at least one graduate among them so now we are in a pro problem on probability that was our basically last topic of the syllabus for the second semester we have done many problems so one more over here so uh 10 persons four are graduates and three has been selected we want the probability that at least uh one is graduate now it is easier if we do it if we use the complementary formula so the probability that at least one is graduate that we write as 1 minus probability that none is graduate and what is that i think everybody can write it so it's 1 minus none is graduate means so how many cases are favorable uh how many cases are not graduates it's 6 so it's 6c3 by 10c3 right and if you calculate it comes as 5 by 6 so option d now question 10 we have uh, totally a different kind of problem here so it it is uh, like the odd man out what we were doing but not with numbers but with patterns choose the figure which is different from the rest So you have to just observe very carefully. Observe very carefully. Take a minute. Find your own answer. By the time I will also share the answer. So the answer is, uh, I think it is going to be B. And the reason is, if you see, uh, in all the figures we have parallel lines touching the vertical line, but they are all. on the two different sides of the vertical line whereas b is the only exception where the parallel lines belong to the same side to the right hand side of the vertical line so your correct option in this case is b okay so uh, i think this was the question problem list for today for the discussion purpose so we will stop this display now and I will come live for a few minutes so that you can put up your questions if you have any queries and also I would ask all of you those who have attended the session to please come to the comment section and write your roll number and section so that we can get your attendance also at the same time you can write your queries your comments whatever you are welcome okay so See you soon again for the online session for the online chatting